What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're going to check out WWE wrestlers who were caught in 4K. Sometimes wrestlers end up doing something and they may end up getting caught later down the line. Um, we're going to check this out, see exactly what they're talking about in, in relation to being caught in 4K. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. We are almost at 100K. Uh, let's get right into this one, man. But due to wrestlers being public figures, they're often caught out in a lie. Sometimes a wrestler may make a bold statement either in an interview or via social media, and this will later transpire to be completely fabricated. This brings on great embarrassment for the wrestler, and they usually respond by going radio silent as they can't handle the criticism. There are also times where fans have been forced to call out a wrestler for their hypocrisy. This wrestler once had principles and rules they've gotten back on months or years later, and more often than not, they can't even justify their own actions. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who were caught in 4K. This should be a good one. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, Mr. Kennedy. Following the passing of Chris Benoit in 2007, several WWE stars past and present appeared on mainstream media. These appearances were designed to defend WWE's honor as there was a ton of backlash centered on WWE, especially mm -hmm. in relation to the use of steroids in pro wrestling. WWE star Mr. Kennedy would appear on Fox News following Benoit's passing, but this was an appearance which would completely expose him, as in the interview Kennedy would claim that he doesn't take steroids, and for the most part, everyone believed him. However, just weeks later, Kennedy was named as a steroid recipient in the famous signature pharmacy scandal. Kennedy was simply a liar. It looked incredibly bad on WWE and didn't exactly present the company in a positive manner. Wow. Number 9. Braun Strowman Braun Strowman's WWE release in 2021 came as a massive surprise. Strowman was one of the top stars in WWE, but budget cuts resulted in WWE cutting ties mm -hmm. with the former Universal Champion. Following his release, Strowman would state in several public interviews that he would not, under any circumstances, wrestle for any company outside of WWE. Naturally, Strowman quickly went back on his promise. Strowman <laughs> would wrestle on several shows, but it was when Strowman eventually returned to WWE in 2022 where Strowman's lies were exposed. Upon his return, Strowman would be claiming in interviews that he kept his word and he didn't wrestle outside of WWE. Fans were quick to call out Strowman for this bizarre lie and the rewriting <laughs> of his own career history. Number 8, Chris Jericho. I mean, I don't even know why he would say that. Like, just, just you know, if you want to go wrestle somewhere else, go wrestle somewhere else. No one's going to knock you for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's the crazy thing. He didn't even have to say that or put that statement out there after he left. The Capitol riots in 2021 revealed a number of wrestlers' political allegiances. In relation to Chris Jericho, he would claim that his wife wasn't present at the riot. However, fans were skeptical of Jericho's claims. Jericho and his wife were known to be Trump supporters thanks to records showing Jericho making a substantial donation to Trump's presidential campaign. Jericho's claim would be disproven when his wife would update her Instagram photo to her being in attendance at the actual riot. His wife would be sporting pro-Trump merchandise and appeared to be having a great time at the infamous event. Social media didn't just call out Jericho for this, but they also made hilarious puns and memes, including one fan on social media tweeting, Break the Capitol walls down. <laughs> Number seven, the Boogeyman. Damn! The Boogeyman's career didn't exactly get off to the best of starts. That was a good Before one. he was given the spooky worm-eating character, he was just trying to get a foot in the door in WWE. The way he attempted to do this was by lying about his age. Back in 2004, during the tryouts for Tough Enough, the Boogeyman would claim that he was just 30 years old. But this was an outright lie as Boogeyman in reality was 40 years of age. Once WWE officials found out about the lie, Boogeyman was cut immediately. However, wow. the Boogeyman would get in the last laugh when he was eventually offered a developmental deal in WWE. That's when the infamous character was born. WWE executive Bruce Pritchard would discuss the Boogeyman's lie on an episode of his Something to Wrestle With podcast and stated, All I remember was Marty being a part of the big cattle call for talent. And when they got in, he said he was 30. He said, really? Are you only 30 years old? And he, he stuck to it, man. And they had him go and they said, oh, where's your license? He said, well, I don't have it here. It's in my car. So okay, great. We'll wait. And everything shut down and 
Marty's standing there and I said, yeah, we'll wait. He left the ring, ran to his car, got his license, came back and gave it to him. Like, uh, Marty, you're not 30 years old. Damn. Like, Number six. Damn, team. man. Hey, he definitely looked like he was in his 30s and he was in his 40s back then. God damn. Dude stayed in tip top shape. In the aftermath of Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out of WWE in May 2022, one of the wrestlers who was overly critical was mm -hmm. WWE legend Booker T. Yep. Booker would claim that if he was in their position, he would have simply done his job and he wouldn't have broken WWE tradition. Now this was an interesting comment from Booker, but it showed complete hypocrisy. Now, for some context, in 2009 when Booker was in TNA, TNA officials booked him to lose to Matt Morgan. Booker simply didn't like these creative plans and outright refused to lose to Morgan if the creative remained intact. Booker felt so disrespected that he decided to part ways with TNA. This is a similar situation to the mm. one that Banks and Naomi were in, yet Booker simply ignored his own established history and looked like a total hypocrite in the process. Yeah, hypocrisy, bro. You got people are gonna call you out on it, especially if you trying to have this moral high ground, like, and you obviously still have good connects with WWE. Is like, huh? But you did something similar in another company. But that's neither here nor there, man. Hey, the history books don't lie. The internet has a lot of information. And you know, if you say something like that and you, you, you're dying on that hill, best believe people are going to search to figure out, are you really that type of individual? Like, do your, do your beliefs line up with what you've done in the past? That's Test. just what it is. Number five, Shawn Michaels. Now, the Montreal Screwjob is one of the most well-known controversies in all of wrestling. When the Screwjob first went down on that fateful night in November 97, Shawn Michaels insisted to Bret Hart that he had nothing to do with the Screwjob. But in reality, HBK was heavily involved and influential in the decision to screw Hart on his last night in the company. The decision for HBK to portray an innocent pawn was that of Vince McMahon. According to HBK in his autobiography, McMahon wanted to take all the blame for the screw job and wanted to avoid damaging HBK's reputation. However, HBK was notoriously a poor liar, and it didn't take long for Hart to find out the true extent of his involvement. Hart would have a ton of resentment towards HBK for the next 13 years, mm -hmm. and that was until the two reconciled in 2010 Classic and have moment. since worked together on several WWE related projects. <laughs> Number 4. CM Punk Yeah, the, their history is legendary. It's. They definitely, for a very long time, did not like each other behind the scenes. And one of the wrestlers who was quick to support Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out of WWE was CM Punk. Punk would praise the actions of Banks and Naomi in a number of interviews, but it was one tweet which led to a ton of controversy. Punk would tweet, it doesn't matter if your opinion of your co-worker is positive or negative, stand with them, because they'll do the same thing to you and you'll wish someone helped. Trust me, you're expendable. Together, you're unstoppable. Shortly after this tweet, AEW would turn to chaos as it was reported that MJF walked out of the company. Instead of sticking to his own principles, mm. Punk went silent. Punk had nothing to say and ultimately sounded like the biggest hypocrite in the world. Yeah. Additionally, Punk's comments about standing with his co-workers yeah. were examined when talents such as Miro and Andrade were tweeting their dissatisfaction with their AEW position, but yet again, Punk would fail to comment. Number three, Ric Flair. Obviously, because Punk was dealing with his own situations as well, so. A WrestleMania 24 featured the in-ring retirement of Ric Flair. Flair, following his last match, would promise that he would never wrestle again. It should have been his on last the legacy match. legacy the match with Shawn Michaels. However, just a few years after the WrestleMania encounter, Flair would be wrestling in TNA. These matches were poorly received and Flair was called out for going back on his word. Yeah. Once his lackluster TNA run had come to an end, Flair would state that it's finally it. His in-ring days are officially over. Nope. But then in 2022, it was announced that Flair would be coming out of retirement for one more match. <sighs> Flair would team with Andrade against the duo of Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. This was billed as a last match of Flair and Flair was adamant that this was the last hurrah. Unfortunately, just a few days after the match had taken place, Flair informed the media that he regretted saying it was going to be his last match, as he has a desire to wrestle again. Fans felt disrespected, but this was nothing new from Flair, as he's made a career out of fake retirements. Number 2. Hulk Hogan I just, uh, I just want him to chill, bro. That's it. That's, that's all I care about. Just, just chill, bro. Just chill. A Hulk Hogan can be called several unflattering terms, with the liar perhaps being the most common. 
Hogan has made a number of unusual claims throughout his I life. Do not use of them words. have been disproven. Right, Take, for instance, the time he claimed that he was supposed to star in the 2008 hit movie The Wrestler. When Hogan first revealed this, fans took it with a grain of salt as Hogan's acting ability was certainly questionable. Embarrassingly, it was later revealed by the director of the movie, Darren Aronofsky, that Hogan was never even considered to be in the movie. Damn. And number one, John That's Cena. That's a major and lie. The issues between Cena and The Rock that were presented on TV in 2011 and 2012 were very much real. Mm -hmm. The Rock took issue with comments Cena had made to the UK media. Cena had stated that The Rock is a hypocrite for claiming he loves WWE and wrestling in general, but then distancing himself completely and going off to Hollywood. The Rock believed that this presented him in a bad light. It was one of the reasons The Rock decided to work a program with Cena. However, in recent years, Cena has done the exact same exact, thing yep, he initially knew, criticized yep, The Rock for. Yep. Cena has left WWE behind and is now a full-time Hollywood megastar. Yeah. Cena has starred in several hit movies such as Fast and Furious and even his own HBO Max show. Which is actually in pretty Cena's good. Defense, he's discussed his hypocrisy at length and he's revealed how sorry he is for his initial claims and realizes how stupid they sound in hindsight. Yeah, they have it, folks, you too. literally are doing the same thing now that you was complaining about then it's hypocrisy at its finest but i'm glad they were able to squash that you know what i'm saying and john cena doing some pretty good things with uh dc man so uh if you haven't checked out uh peacemaker there we go i couldn't think of it it's a great show go check it out i think you guys will enjoy it john cena's acting is actually really good in that show definitely carries the show um but yeah man sometimes i mean it's, it's the social media is internet it's easy to catch people in 4k on certain situations like wait a minute you said this but there's video footage of this and that don't line up with what you just said and you're being a hypocrite so but yeah man i i just want to say once again we're almost at 100k on the channel so i appreciate all the love and support more videos are dropping this week you know we're going to be checking out uh crown jewel this saturday on the main page so be on the lookout for that but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 100k appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace